Oh, uh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, what are you guys doing out here at 3 a.m.? Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the Olight S1A Baton flashlight. This light was given to me by Olight in exchange for a review. They handed these things out like Halloween candy. A lot of guys posted up videos or posted up reviews straight away and that's all well and good, but I've been carrying mine for over three weeks as a legitimate EDC item. So, you know, this is probably going to be one of the last ones out there. The other thing is, why would you watch this video after there's been so many other videos and reviews? And it's true that this isn't going to be as scientific as some of the written reviews that you may have seen. I'm going to put a link to Unknown 00101's written review at the Budget Light Forum along with DBSAR's review. Both those dudes do an excellent job doing real scientific type flashlight reviews. You're not going to get that here, okay? It's also true that I'm not going to say anything about this light that hasn't already been said as far as the fit and finish, the performance, all of that stuff. It's a really great light. I'm going to have positive things to say, but I'm also going to take a look at three different things that haven't really been mentioned anywhere else. Number one, the fact that there's a lot of attention to detail, um, especially in the lanyard of all things, that kind of shows Olight's really been thinking about what they're doing with the flashlights. I'm also going to talk about just how small the flashlight is in comparison to the vast majority of other uh, AA lights. And the third thing that I don't think anybody's really discussed, and is kind of important to note, is just how far not only the flashlight industry has come in the last seven, eight, you know, ten years, but also how far Olight's come. And one of my favorite lights from years past has been an Olight i2 EOS flashlight, and it's very, very tiny and it's almost exactly the same size as the new S1A, but it had, uh, you know, marginal performance given what else was out there. And compared to what's out there now, it's worlds away, this new flashlight compared to the old Olight flashlight. This is everything that comes in the box except for the card that the flashlight was attached to that was in the box. In the uh, intervening five weeks that I've had this, I've uh, misplaced that little card. It was just a basic uh, piece of plastic. Okay, so nice box, highlights the features right here, sturdy, okay, that's all to the good. It came with this Olight branded lithium primary cell, it's 1.5 volts. It, um, you have to take the tail cap off when you get it, pull the plastic sleeve, insulating sleeve off the back to get it to work, but I'm running uh, an IMR cell in there at the moment so here's the really great direction book owner's manual okay i'm going to go over the run times but if you want you could pause right here hopefully there's you guys can read it um if not i'll put it all in the description box it gets a little confusing because it things change depending on what kind of cell you're using and there's this lanyard which i don't use lanyard so it's still wrapped up but uh, it's, it's a pretty nice lanyard, but the one thing I want to say is that, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, uh, how about right here? Okay, they call that little piece of metal a perforation tool. And of course it's meant to go into the tiny lanyard hole. Okay, help thread the, uh, the lanyard in there. That's the kind of attention to detail that, you know, it could be just because I'm more into budget lights, but that, that's fantastic. That's like the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. I mean, kudos to Olight for that. The emitter is a Cree XML2. Now, I carry a bigger light generally, so I'm not too concerned about it, but I did weigh this on my scale at home and uh, it's 1.3 ounces empty and with the uh, lithium ion cell in there it's a two ounces even. I'm going to go over some of the other specs real quick. The light itself is just shy of 80 millimeters long and 21 millimeters wide. If you use a lithium ion primary cell, that is to say a 1.5 volt lithium cell, you're going to have four modes available to you. 
and these are Olight's numbers by the way, you're going to have a 0.5 lumen moonlight for 25 days. I'm going to say right here that the moonlight is about perfect, um, especially for the way I use the flashlight. You're going to get a low of 5 lumens that will run for 80 hours. You're going to get a 50 lumen medium that will run for 10.5 hours. And you're going to get a high of 220 lumens, which steps down to 100 lumens. Okay, and the runtime at 220 is 110, and then the 30 minute step down. Now, if you use an alkaline cell like this Dora cell or this generic knockoff, or even uh, a 1.2 volt rechargeable like that green door cell or in any loop you're still gonna have the same four modes available to you okay but in this case the moon was gonna last for 20 days the low for 75 hours the medium for 4.5 hours and you're gonna have the high which is gonna run for 12 minutes before it steps down for another 80 personally I do not recommend using regular alkaline cells because sooner or later they're just going to leak on you. In here now, there's an E-Fest IMR cell. I didn't bring one with me, but I've put in AW protected cells, AW unprotected cells, and you know they all work fine. So when you're uh, using a high-powered, high-drain lithium-ion cell or an IMR cell, what have you, a 14500 cell, you're going to get a fifth mode, the turbo, which is an incredible 600 lumens. That's fantastic out of a light this size. The um, 600 lumens on turbo runs for a minute and then it steps down to 300 lumens for another 60 minutes. If you run um, the 14500, you have a moonlight of 15 days, a low of 60 hours, a medium of 6.5 hours and a high of 10 oh excuse me 100 hours with a 10 minute step down and again moonlight is 0.5 lumens low is 5 lumens medium is 50 lumens the standard high is 220 with a step down to 100 lumens and the turbo is 600 stepping down to 300 lumens I, like i said at the beginning that's all kind of confusing because it's you know everything changes depending on the cell you're you're using but you know, I'll put it all in the description box, and um, in practice, it really doesn't matter. Okay, you're going to have the modes that are available, and that's that. Now, you you saw when I pulled the um, IMR out of there, this is a magnetic tail cap. Obviously, you know, it'll stick to whatever. Some people like the magnet, some people don't. It's really great if you want to stick it through a fridge in a, in a power outage, or maybe on the car if you have some kind of mechanical difficulty out on the road, maybe a change in a flat or something like that. So yeah, lots of uses uh, for the magnet. Okay, besides the fact that this thing can go from 0.5 lumens all the way up to 600 lumens, all while recognizing what kind of cell is inside so it can uh, properly regulate the voltage. There's some other really great standout features here. Probably the most important is the TIR optic. Now in a normal flashlight, you're gonna have a lens and a reflector. Here you have basically one piece of glass that handles both duties that the other two would normally handle. And what's really great about it is it evens out the beam so you don't have like a really dedicated hot spot with some spill. It's nice even brightness the whole way through. You have a stainless steel pocket clip. Carries very deep. Okay. It's black which is fantastic. You know it's sometimes you see flashlights with the silver clip or whatever and I don't know it's it's always been a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, so it's nice to see a black clip. The other thing is, you'll notice that around the side switch and around the, the optic, you have blue, what I'm going to call anodizing. Olay calls it PVD technology. 
not sure exactly what that is, but it looks fantastic. I know my wife commented on it, and she normally does not comment on the flashlights unless there's a little bit of bling. So that goes back to the attention to detail that I spoke to earlier. It's, it's really fantastic. Olight's really at the top of their game right now. Now, it's supposed to have a recessed switch, but as you can pro hopefully tell, it's not really recessed. Um, occasionally it will come on in the pocket. That's a little bit of a bummer. Not often, you know, just every once in a while. And You know, after five weeks of carrying it, I'd say it's happened probably about once a week, five, five times maybe. Oops. Now, I've tried to put the pocket clip over the switch, but sometimes the flashlight will still come on even clipped like this. Plus, when you pull this out of your pocket, you have to manipulate it to get it so you could turn it on and off. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I wish that the, uh, the switch was more recessed. Okay, let's run over the UI really quick. If you press and hold, you'll get the moon. Not sure you can see it in my hand. Okay. Another click will turn it off. Quick presses turn the light on and off. Once it's on, if you hold it, it'll cycle through all the modes. Okay, just stop wherever you want it. Okay. Now when it's cycling through, it doesn't go back to the moon. The only way to get to the moon is to press and hold off of start. Now you have to remember when I was cycling through there I'm using a um, 14500 so you're getting the turbo. If you had a double A uh, alkaline or um, something like that in there you would only get the, the three modes not the four when you're cycling. Now from off if you hit it twice real fast you'll go right to turbo. Okay. If you hit it three times real fast it'll go to strobe And there happens to be a, a three minute and a nine minute timer on the flashlight. That's not a feature I normally use, so I didn't play with it too much, or at all actually. But uh, yeah, in the directions it tells you how to do it, and it's not too complicated. Again, it has mode memory, so. Wherever you turn it off, gonna turn back on in that mode. Okay, now in the intro, I stated that I used to really love the old light. Actually, I still love the old light I series, and here it is right here. Okay had nowhere near the output of this certainly did not have a good pocket clip pocket clip was uh, pretty weak but more important for this discussion is the size comparison it's almost exactly the same length okay it's a little bit bigger in diameter the uh, S1A but yeah th this it's hard to imagine that you're gonna find a smaller double-a flashlight than this S1A baton I should mention that this one doesn't even have a switch this uh, I2 it's a twisty right operates like this three modes this happens to be the CR123A version I happen to have several triple-a versions but again, like th this is a AAA keychain flashlight. Look at look at the comparison. Now, obviously, much wider. But as far as pocketability goes, it's going to be hard to beat this S1A baton. Just for comparison's sake, I brought some uh, other AA flashlights that I have. First is going to be an Ultrafire UFH2B. Not bad. Similar in size. 
Okay, this is an angle head flashlight. Also can be used as a headlamp. Speaking of also used as a headlamp, this is a Sparks SG5. Similar in length, but much fatter. No, I wouldn't say much fatter. It's, it's, it's definitely fatter, right? Let's look at the back. A little bit. An old Pentagon. I forget what they call this. The uh, Molly, I believe, was the name of this flashlight. Much bigger. Very weak output. This was like 40 lumens. Civic uh, SK68. Not that much longer, but much bigger out the front. This Orca torch is enormous compared to this S1A. This happens to be the T11 model. This Through Night Neutron 2AV2, much bigger. Puts out a little bit more horsepower out the front, but uh, you know, you pay for it in size. This is a Galaxy uh, Power. I forget what I think it's an F4 or something. But again, this is still a double A, but much much bigger. Not so much in the diameter. But everywhere I go, the sun comes. This Ramesson RCG2, enormous, enormous double-A flashlight. Comparatively, like this is not horrible, but uh, my wife likes to keep this on her nightstand. This is a 4.7's Quark. This was a custom Lego job, so this has the... Um, head with the greater voltage window so this puts out I want to say like 600 or 700 lumens too out the front but longer okay bigger diameter and um, this is the BLF Kronos X5 you know at one time or another I've carried most of those AA flashlights in the um, in my pocket, but um, yeah, it's this is about as small as you can get and still uh, have something substantial uh, as far as output. Okay, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching, Olight. Thank you again for sending me this flashlight. I've really enjoyed carrying it for uh, the last five weeks or so. Uh, for me personally, I, I, if I have a real knock against it, is that it's a little small in the hand. Obviously part of the way it was designed was for it to actually be small in the hand, so that's just a personal preference thing. That's not a real complaint. Some people uh, who want to carry a small, powerful flashlight are going to love this. Anybody who wants the uh, ability to handle any kind of double A you could throw in there is going to love this. People like my wife who like a little bling on their flashlight are going to love the fact that there's a, a little blue flash on some key uh, key parts. And overall, it's just a well-made, fantastic flashlight. I didn't say it before, but the knurling, the anodization, everything on here is first rate. I have no complaints. This is This is really great. So again, if you guys are looking for a double-A flashlight or a real pocket powerhouse, throw 14500 in here, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You want to let your wife or kids use it and you don't want to worry about uh, the lithium-ion technology in their hands, regular any loop or something, no problem. So very versatile, very well built, fantastic output. There's not much more you can uh, ask for in a flashlight. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. You know, how's my hair looking? I kind of got like a... You guys remember Hermie from uh, the little dentist elf from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Yeah, I kind of got that going on with my head today.